So starting this, it's very important. Uh, you shouldn't miss any class from the crash course. Oh, I created a lot of these anyway. So today is the circular motion. Now, so the very first thing we're going to do today, the, uh, the first thing he's going to ask you all the time, almost every question of circular motion. We're going to talk about radian. All right. So how do you define radian? You write that one radian is defined as a specific angle such that so when you're done with these notes will you send them to us i have already given it to you the all, all the point of all like giving the whole pdf to you is that you write it on with your own hands when you and you have to resubmit it you know i'll print Otherwise, it after class. Have, yes, have to, you know do all this yeah yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll print it after class bye yeah Today you can just write it with hand and then you complete the notes later. Okay. When you print it out and send it back. Yes, so sir, you, before the next week, you can send it so I can check it. Anyway, so one reading is defined as a specific angle such that the arc length is equal to the radius of the circle. So this is the definition. Uh, this definition will be there all the time. So you should remember that. The next thing is angular speed, which we also call angular frequency. So this definition is there always. So it is the rate of change of angular displacement. The symbol we use for angular speed is omega. The formula for this would be omega is equal to theta by d. Theta is the, uh, you know, the angular displacement and it is a scalar quantity. Now, the SI units for this would be radians Per second. Now let me explain this. What is happening here? So when you look at a circle, you, you should remember that this whole thing, right? This is the angle. If you move from point A to point B, this is the displacement, and this is the radius of the circle. Is that clear, everyone? So in reality. What I want you to understand is that this, this displacement and the radius and the angular displacement are related like this. So S is equal to r times theta. This is the formula that they relate each other to. Okay. The next thing you guys should remember is that just writing here, okay, for a complete circle, theta is equal to 2 pi radian. So naturally, S is equal to 2 pi and R, which is the circumference of any circle. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Risha, how are you? Risha, you knew me, right? This is the first time we're meeting, right? All right, now, so then a lot of times they will ask you the derivation of angular speed. Now, the derivation of angular speed with respect to the regular speed is such that, that you're gonna say 
three things keep in mind. So we have tangential velocity. So we that that is basically v equals to displacement over time. We have uh, then angular speed, which is basically omega is equal to theta over t. And then we have the relationship of its own, like r, uh, theta is equal to s over r itself, like that. Okay. So we have three formulas that you need to remember. So the thing you're going to do is because s is equal to r theta, I can simply put it right here. If I do that, then this becomes v equals to r theta times t. Like that. And itself, you guys need to remember that because this can be written as t equals to theta by w, I can put it right here. And now I'll get this r theta divided by theta omega. Theta and theta will cancel out. So it will. And omega will come on top because it's double dividing. So it is going to be Rw. So the equation that we're going to look at is V is equal to Rw. And that's the relationship that we needed to derive. And this is the equation that will basically always be there. All right. One other way to make it less, you know, let's make it less uh, complicated way. Let's put it this way. Instead of this, what you can do is you can put it right here. And then if you put it, then it would be omega equals to, th instead of theta, you can write S over um, R, and then there's T already, you can do that. And because you see S over T is the same as S over T here, you can just replace these, and then it will be equal to omega times R equals to W. So that's basically much simpler than the other one. You can do that. All right, everybody understand this? Moshe and Risha and Saman, uh, Munib, Gatika. Yes, sir. Anu, okay. yes. yes, sir. Okay, write this down, please. Let me put some numbers into it so you don't remember one, two, and this is the third step we've done. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is the derivation of angular velocity. So for... Uh, So for angular frequency, I need to do two things. Number one, I should remember that one complete revolution is equivalent to theta as two pi that I told you already. Okay. So also then we can say because theta is S over R, Hence, we can write S is equal to 2 pi and R for one complete revolution. The third thing we should, the second thing we should remember is that omega is pi by T. So for one whole revolution, the total angle is 2 pi and the time it would take to complete one revolution is T. Where I just want to tell you that this T is the time period because in one whole time period, the revolution is done, right? Now, since we know that frequency itself 
is one upon time period. Hence, we can write that omega would be two pi. And instead of one upon time period, I can just write frequency. So I got two formulas now. So I know omega is two pi over t or omega is two pi f in terms of the frequency and time period. You can always remember that. It's a very simple derivation. Okay. All right, everyone. Yes, sir. Okay, like this one. If you have any questions, do let me know, okay? Okay. Now. Hello, Essen. Hello. Essen, on the very first day of class, you're late. That's um, I was expecting some link on WhatsApp. Oh. Okay. Now, so when you've done this, you've done this, should I go forward now? Um, yes, sir. Fine. Now, for centripetal acceleration, there is no derivation. They will never ask you anything. You just need to remember the formulas. So, first of all, the formula for centripetal acceleration in terms of tangential velocity is V squared over R or A is equal to omega squared R. Both formulas will be there and a lot of time they're basically. Uh, required by the examiner. So you just need to, you know, learn these. There's no other way. Okay. Now, the definition of centripetal force will be there. So we got to learn that. So centripetal force is the resultant force. Now, when you say resultant force, this carries the M1 mark. Now, M1 mark in the exam means that if you do not write this word only, whether the rest of the definition is fine, they will never give you any uh, credit for that. So resultant force that acts towards the center of circle, which enables a body to move in a circular motion. So this is M1 and A1. All right, this definition. So whether you, if you, if you just write force that acts towards the center and everything is right, and you've not written this particular word, it means that you will not get credit for the whole definition. Is that clear? So that's so important to write uh, a result for. That's why I've highlighted it and put a Possibly, it's right. Is that clear, everyone? Now, since, you know, any resultant force in physics is given by F equals to MA. So now for this, you can write two formulas. One, with respect to tangential velocity, it will be F equals, instead of A, you can write this one. So M V square over R. So that's one formula. And you can also write F equals to M or omega squared as the other formula because both of them will be used in different situations. So, all right, is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay, write this down, please. All right, Anusha and uh, Gatika, do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. And uh, Moshit and Emmet. 
yes sir yes sir okay very good very good very good okay okay all right now going to the question here so this is one type of question that's going to come so now speaking of this question then so first of all i would like to tell you that here um it says define radian for two mark yes please who's going to tell me what is the definition of radian please anyone hurry up hurry up specific angle One. such that the arc length is equal to the radius yes so spe so that only scores you one mark Atika, because what you write, need to write is angle it is defined as the specific angle such that the uh, arc length is equal to the radius of the circle one mark the angle subtended at center if you do not write this no mark so that's one mark and then for the other mark you need to write that um, such that arc length is equal to radius of circle. This will give you two marks. Do you guys understand this? So all of you who just told me the definition that just carries one mark. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, sir. But uh, that was the definition you uh, told us earlier, right? Uh, define the angle is subtended at the center. I did write it at the center. That's not fair. No, you didn't write angle subtended, I believe. Yeah. I didn't write. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I sorry. Express the angles of the arc length equal to subtended at the center. Sorry. I forgot. All right. Here. My bad. Okay. So is that clear, everyone? Any question right now? Now, then okay. says, explain what is meant by angular speed about a point uh, P at the mass. All right. Please tell me this. Hurry up. It is the rate of change of angular displacement. Yes. Angular displacement. All right. You can also write angular displacement per unit time if you want to write. That's also fine. All right. Now, then um, the other thing that you need to do is because it says meant by angular speed of the mass, just remember that because it is saying that it is attached to a string. So just add for this is one mark. The second mark you should add is by the mass attached to the string or you can just write by the string anything like that is that clear everyone all right then going to the next one it says that uh, for this one determine the maximum number of revolution of the plate per minute for the mass to remain on the plate, explain your work. All right, now here it says that there is a mass M, which is at distance T, and the speed of rotation of plate is gradually increased from zero until the mass is seen to slide off the plate. The maximum friction force between the plate and the mass is given by this, all right? Okay, now what exactly is W? I don't know. Distance is given, W is the weight. Okay, fine, that's fine, okay. Now, what you're going to do is you guys should understand that this is basically when the maximum friction force is basically providing the centripetal force. Now, centripetal force itself is given by F equals to M R omega square. And this formula is F equals to 0 0.2 W like that. All right. So 
I can equate this. I can write m r omega squared equals to 7.02 w. The issue with this question is that if you see, there's no mass given in the question. There's this weight and we don't know the mass. So don't worry about it. What we can do is we can write this as this. And because w is equal to mg, we can just write mg here. Now, once you do that, you see m and m cancels out. And now we have r omega squared and 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.72 mg. So R is given that is 35 centimeter change in two meters, which is 0 0.35 and Omega, we got to find this and then 0 0.72 and G is 9.81 as we all know. Now let's pull up the calculator. Let's quickly do this. So it's going to be 0 0.2 times 9.81 divided by 0 0.35 and, yeah. and it's going to be, let's take under root as well. Let's shift on shift under root. Oh, sorry. Shift me under root of answer. So omega per second. Now I need number of revolutions per minute. So basically it's asking about the frequency here, right? So what you should do is you should do uh, omega. Now let me just do it here. Omega is 2 pi and F. So we want frequency. Omega is 4.5 divided by 2 pi. And when, once we do that, oh my God, this is five marks. Wow. All right. 4.5 divided by 2 divided by pi. And is that correct? I don't know. It's correct. 2 pi. All right. So it's going to be um, seven, 0 0.716 uh read uh sorry uh revolutions per second this is hertz all right this is per second now i need to convert this into minutes so how do i convert this into minutes i multiply by 60 right because you see 0 0.71 divided by second right if i want to convert second so in a second there are one in a minute i can say if one minute has 60 seconds Right, so a second has one upon 60 minutes, right? So if I write minutes instead of this, so I have to multiply 60 on top like this, so it will then be in minutes. So let's multiply 60 with this. So it's going to be 43 revolutions per minute, right? Is that clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Write this down. Any questions, please? Um, Essen and Risha and Falak. Hello, Falak. Hello. Munib and Anusha. Everything is clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Then then it says the plate is covered when a station when it is stationary with mud. Fine. So uh, suggest and explain whether mud near the edge of the plate or near the center will first leave the plate as the angular speed of plate is slowly increased. Now, anybody has an idea about that? So from this, we got to look at the equation. So F is equal to uh, basically M R omega square, right? So we can say centripetal force required is larger at larger radius because they're you know proportional like this. All right, see. Hence, hence. As R increases, F increases. So the mud at ends fly off uh, first. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, sir. Good. Okay. Do not be shy. Please ask anything you have because 
don't worry, do not worry. Okay. Now there will be two kinds of motion. First of all, I like I'd like to tell you in about four minutes the meeting is going to close, so you guys got to rejoin the class. All right, with the same link. Now, so there will be two kinds of motion that we're going to discuss in this chapter. First one is the horizontal motion. Okay, so for the horizontal motion, let's uh, look at uh, certain things first. So. For the horizontal motion, there could be multiple uh, ways it can be they can give you. First of all, let's talk about a pendulum. In a pendulum, the horizontal motion looks like this. So you swing a pendulum horizontally, it will go on like this. Because the weight of that is going to act down, because of the weight, there will be a tension in the string. Now, let me tell you this. Whenever this sort of question comes, obviously there will be angles given to you. Even if it's not, you need to work it out. Tensions, one component will be upwards and the other components towards the center. So, because this is angle, then this is also the same angle, this is alternate angle. This component can be called as tension cosine theta. And this component will be tension sine theta. Now you need to understand that the weight of this object is being balanced by tension cos theta. That's why it's not going down, right, or upwards. However, the tension sine theta is the only force left, which means this is the force which is also acting towards the center, is providing the centry force. So you can always write the tension sine theta will be equal to mv square over r or m r of square. Is that clear everyone? Yes, sir. Good. Now, the next thing, the next thing they, they might give you is basically a plane like this which is taking a turn, okay? Now when a plane takes a turn, it tilts its body, so it can make a horizontal turn like this. And now you should understand the weight of the plane is always down and the lift force, which is basically the force due to air is acting this way. And obviously there's going to be an angle, all right? So if the angle is given from here, then this component of the lift, let's call this L, right? So this will be lift sine, sorry, cosine theta. So you're gonna work it out. And this would be lift sine of theta. Now in this example as well, you need to remember that lift sine theta is balancing the weight. So it's not going upwards or downwards. So it's basically balanced, but the lift cosine theta is the only force left which provides the centripetal force. And depending on the question, you just need to use mv square over r or m r omega square, like that. Okay. Is it clear, Essen? Muneeb? Yes. Okay, good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then. Now, same goes for, you know, a car making a turn. Okay. Third example is when a car is taking a uh, horizontal, like it's turning like this. So its wheels are like this, right? It's taking a turn. So when it's taking a turn like this, you should remember that actually a car is driven through friction. It's not driven through um, forward force. The wheels of a car basically turn backwards to make it move forward. So the friction now, so when the fr friction is here, so friction does two things. Once it can basically help in going forward and then always to the side, because this is the angle then. This one will be friction sine theta, and this will be friction cosine of theta. 
So friction sine theta basically causes forward acceleration in this particular case. And friction cosine theta is going to basically be equal to because it's towards the center as the centri centripetal force. So you can basically always put it equal to that because it's uh, it, it, towards the center. Just remember that. All right. Okay. Now, Everybody has written this. Any questions? Uh, so far, no, sir. Okay. Now, so one of the questions that came here, we're going to discuss this. It says that a large bowl is made of a part of a hollow sphere and a small spheric ball is placed inside the hole uh, inside the ball and given the horizontal speed the ball follows uh, a horizontal circular path of constant radius all right so the radius is given they've given this question as well now they say by resolving the reaction force r into two perpendicular components show that the resultant force f acting on the ball given by the expression is f tan theta right so we're going to work out the same thing that we're doing again and again and what you're going to do is you're going to say, so R will have two components, one like this, one towards the center like this. This will be R cosine of theta, and this will be R sine of theta. So from this expression, can you tell me what is W equal to? R sine theta. So W exactly is R sine theta because it's neither going up or down. And R cosine theta is equal to basically the uh, resultant force F, which is the centripetal force, right? Everybody understand this? Um, yes, sir. Okay. If you still have any questions, do let me know. Okay, do not be shy. It's fine. Okay. Now, so then so then what you're going to do is if you look at it, there's no R in this expression. So what I'm going to do is I would like to put this R right into here. So to do that, uh, I need to make this R the subject. So it will be F over cos theta. And if I put it there, then it is going to be W equals to F over cos theta times sine of theta, right? Now, there's a math identity, which is sine theta over it's cos tan theta, theta is tan theta. So from there, I can write W equals to F tan theta, and now it is proved. Understood? Uh, sir, right. can you explain the ending, like uh, from R is equal to F by cos theta? Uh, you want me to explain this part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you do understand the two equations that I made, right? Yes, sir. If I write this equation as R equals to F over cos theta. What do you mind? No, because you're making R the subject. Yes. Can I put this here? Um. Yes. I can replace R, right? So what will yes. it be? W equals to F cos theta. And there's sine theta already there, right? Yes. Can I write it as F times sine theta over cos theta? Yes. And sine theta over cos theta is tan theta, right? So okay. then can I write I, I didn't w? know that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now you know. Yes, yes. So I, I'm going to charge you for math tuition as well now. 
<laughs> How's that? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, so then uh, it says state the significance of the force F for the motion. Who's going to tell me? It makes it keep going in a circular path. What is this force F? Centripetal force. Centripetal force. Do you guys understand now? Very good. All right. All right. Now, then it says the ball moves in a circular path radius this. For the radius, the angle is 28. Calculate. This is very easy because you already have this, right? Just need to calculate the speed. So, unfortunately, do we have the weight? That's not fair. Doesn't matter, even if you don't have the weight, because the equation they've given is F equals to tan theta. Now, even if some, like this question, you couldn't get and you couldn't solve it, do not worry about it, because now you can use the expression given and you can do this question and do not lose, you know, the all marks. Um, now, W is equal to mg, right? F is equal to mv square over r. Now, why am I using mv square over r? And I, now, why not mr omega square? Because they're asking about the speed. They're not asking about angular speed. Equals to tan theta. Mass and mass will cancel out. This is 9.81. V is what we need to find. The radius is 0 0.14. I change it into meters. And tan of 28. Like that. So then, let's multiply this. Back. And... It is going to be 9.81 times 0 0.14 divided by 10, 28. So this is going to be V squared equals to 0, 2 point, oh, 2.92. And now V is going to be under root of the answer. It's going to be 1.71. All right, is that clear, everyone? Essen and Falak, do you guys understand this? Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Very good. Okay. Now, so that would be the answer. Anyway, now let's move to the vertical motion. Sir, why am I getting 1.6? You're getting 1.6? Yeah. Oh my God. Let me check my calculator. There's something wrong. Wait. 9.81 times 0 0.14. Maybe I've written something wrong. Divided by, or maybe it's in radian. It's, it should be in degrees. Oh my God. Sorry. I was in gradient mode. This and under root of answer. Yes, yeah, sorry, it's 1.61. My calculator had a different mode. 1.61. All right, is that clear now? Please make the correction, sorry. Okay. Now, we're on to uh, vertical circle motion. I would like to do it at one go in tomorrow's class. Right. If you have any questions, do let me know now. Now, again, uh, the thing that I want to get, let me see if I can go vertical. So I only give you a vertical question. Okay. Now, there are, when you open the PDF that I sent you, there are, at the end of this, there are some practice questions given, right? So this is your homework today. Okay. You download the file, you do this. And you are also going to do this one. This is a horizontal, would, would it work? Yeah, it would work. Okay, this one is also your homework. And what else is your homework? This is circular magnitude, yeah, homework. Okay. And what is this question? Oh, yeah, homework. So 
too much homework for one day. And yeah, this is not. Don't do this. This is a vertical motion. Okay. So the ones I've written are homework. You can check it. Uh, you can, you know, do them um, and try to complete the worksheet. Again, it's basically, you can note down this. This is uh, October, November 21. Okay. Uh, four, three. And then the next homework is, what is this? Uh, question one from, yeah. This is, I didn't write it. Sorry. You have to, you know, do it. This is this one. Oh, five. Now, when you open the worksheet, please do, uh, those who have not joined the Google Classroom, they should join now. It's U-U-V-I-N. Should I just send it again? Wait. I send it to you on Skype as well. Those who come from Skype now. Uh, A2. Right. So, this is the uh, class to Google Classroom. Falak, please look at this. So, when you again go to Google Drive, you will have this file already. Uh, you basically complete this, what we have done. Just write down. So the notes are with you forever. And then what the questions you need to do is you go down, you skip vertical circular motion and the question. You go to the practice question section. Here you will find question one from here and then question one from the next one as well. And then question number one from the other one as well, right? Like this. And then you will stop uh, at this question. You won't have, you don't have to do, you also have to do this one. You just need to, you don't have to do this one. Okay. Don't do the blue one. Do the rest of the ones. All right. Is that clear, everyone? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. We'll see yes, you tomorrow. Same time. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. You too. Sir. Yes, Gatika. I need a quick help. I have exam tomorrow. Gatika at 9 p.m. Not right now. Achha, I'll send Apply. the question on WhatsApp. Okay, done. Bye, Bye sir. Bye.